Have you ever wondered how male and female brains differ? An intriguing question, isn't it? This is the question that has piqued the interest of countless individuals around the world, and one that has spurred numerous studies and research in the fields of psychology, neuroscience and gender studies. It's a topic that has far-reaching implications and has the potential to shape our understanding of human behavior, cognition and even societal norms. Understanding the differences between male and female brains isn't just about satiating our curiosity. It's about unraveling the intricate tapestry of our minds to better comprehend the complex interplay between our biology and our behavior. It's about acknowledging and appreciating the diversity that exists within us and how these differences contribute to who we are as individuals. So buckle up, because today we dive into the fascinating world of our brain and explore the differences between the male and female brain. Before we delve into the differences, understanding the basics of our brain is essential. Imagine a vast, bustling city with countless activities happening all at once. That's what it's like inside our heads, with our brain acting as the grand conductor of this complex symphony. Our brain is divided into two hemispheres, the left and the right, each performing a unique set of functions. The left hemisphere, often dubbed the logical side, is responsible for analytical thinking, language and number skills. It's the part of the brain that helps you solve a tricky math problem or learn a new language. On the other hand, the right hemisphere is all about creativity and intuition. It helps us understand the big picture, recognize faces, interpret emotions and appreciate music and art. Now let's zoom in a bit further. Each of these hemispheres is subdivided into four main regions known as lobes. The frontal lobe, located at the front of the brain, is the decision-making center. It's involved in problem solving, planning and controlling our movements. Right behind it, we have the parietal lobe, which processes sensory information like touch, temperature and spatial awareness. Nestled at the back of our heads, we find the occipital lobe, the visual processing center of the brain. It's like a built-in cinema, interpreting all the images our eyes capture. Last but not least, on each side of the brain, we have the temporal lobes, our own personal audio system. They process sounds and are crucial for understanding language and forming memories. As you can see, our brain is a marvel of nature, a highly organized, intricate network of neural pathways that work together to make us who we are. Each part has a specific role to play, contributing to the beautiful symphony that is human cognition and behavior. With this basic understanding of the brain, we can now explore the differences between the male and female versions. So fasten your seatbelts as we embark on an exciting journey into the fascinating world of the human mind. Believe it or not, there are physical differences between the male and female brain. It's not just about pink and blue, it's about the gray and white too. For starters, let's talk about size. Now, before we jump to conclusions, bigger does not necessarily mean better in this context. On average, male brains tend to be approximately 10% larger than female brains. However, this is largely due to differences in body size. It's like comparing a mansion to a cottage. Both can be equally cozy and functional. Their size doesn't determine their ability to be a home. Next up, weight. Again, male brains typically weigh more, around three pounds compared to the female's 2.4 pounds. But let's remember, we're not in a weightlifting competition here. More weight doesn't equate to more intelligence or capability. Now let's delve deeper and talk about the composition of the brain. You've probably heard of grey matter and white matter. Grey matter includes regions of the brain involved in muscle control, sensory perception and decision making. On the other hand, white matter is responsible for communication between different parts of the brain. Studies show that men generally have more grey matter, while women have more white matter. But what does this mean? Well, one theory suggests that because women have more white matter, they might be better at multitasking as white matter aids in the communication between different brain regions. On the flip side, the abundance of grey matter in men might make them more efficient in tasks requiring more localised processing. Remember, these are averages and they don't apply to every individual. We're all unique, with brains as diverse as we are. These differences are not about superiority or inferiority, they're about understanding the fascinating complexity of our brains. These physical differences are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to understanding the male and female brain. So stay tuned as we dig deeper into the cognitive and behavioral differences in the scenes to come. 
beyond physical differences, cognitive differences exist between male and female brains. This is where things get really fascinating. The cognitive realm is where our brains process information, solve problems and perform tasks. Different studies have unearthed significant variations in how male and female brains function in these areas. Let's start with language skills. Women typically excel in this domain. According to a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, women are more proficient in language tasks because their brains are wired to better integrate the analytical and intuitive, involving both the left and right hemispheres. This could explain why women are often credited with being more adept at multitasking. On the other hand, men usually outperform women in spatial tasks. This involves the ability to understand, reason, and remember the spatial relations among objects or space. A study published in the journal Neuropsychologia attributed this to the larger parietal cortex in men, the area of the brain associated with space perception. This might explain why men stereotypically are less likely to ask for directions and more likely to excel in tasks that require spatial skills, like navigating a new city or assembling furniture. Now, let's talk about emotional processing. Contrary to popular belief, both men and women are emotional creatures. However, the way they process emotions can be quite different. Women tend to have a more active limbic system, the part of the brain that's responsible for emotions, making them more in tune with their feelings. Men, on the other hand, have a more active amygdala, the area of the brain that deals with experiencing and expressing emotions. This may explain why women are often considered more empathetic and men more action-oriented. It's crucial to remember that these differences don't imply superiority or inferiority. They merely highlight the diverse ways our brains function. Each brain is unique and influenced by a myriad of factors, including genetics, environment and personal experiences. These cognitive differences also don't predetermine our abilities or potential. Just because men are generally better at spatial tasks doesn't mean all men are good at them or that women can't excel in them. Similarly, even though women typically have better language skills, it doesn't mean all women are proficient in languages or that men can't be skilled linguists. It's also worth noting that the brain is highly adaptable. This characteristic, known as neuroplasticity, means our brains can grow, change and adapt throughout our lives. So our abilities aren't set in stone, but can be enhanced or developed with practice and experience. In conclusion, the cognitive differences between male and female brains offer fascinating insights into how each sex perceives and navigates the world. They contribute to our strengths, shape our weaknesses, and influence our behaviours in subtle, complex ways. These cognitive differences play a significant role in how males and females perceive and interact with the world. Our brains also influence our behaviours, and there are notable differences between males and females. As we delve deeper into the labyrinth of the human mind, we find that our behaviours are not solely a product of our environment or upbringing. Rather, they are intricately entwined with the physiology of our brains. This fact is especially prominent when we consider the behavioural differences between males and females. Let's consider aggression first. It's no secret that males are generally more aggressive than females. This isn't just a societal observation, but a phenomenon backed by science. Studies have found that the amygdala, an area of the brain involved in emotional responses and aggression, is larger in males. This might explain why boys are more likely to engage in rough and tumble play, while girls are more likely to engage in social play. Risk taking is another area where the sexes differ significantly. Ever wondered why men are more likely to engage in extreme sports or risky financial investments? Well, you can thank the brain for that. Research indicates that the area of the brain that weighs up risk and reward, known as the orbitofrontal cortex, functions differently in males and females. In males, this area is less active, leading to a higher propensity for risk-taking behaviour. On the flip side, females tend to be more empathetic and this too is linked to brain differences. The part of the brain associated with empathy, the anterior insula, is typically more active in females. This increased activity might explain why women are often more attuned to the emotions of others, more likely to offer comfort, and more adept at reading facial expressions. Let's not forget, these are generalizations, and there's a wide spectrum of behavior within each gender. Not all males are aggressive risk takers, 
and not all females are empathetic nurturers. These differences are tendencies, not absolutes. It's also crucial to remember that our brains are malleable. They can change and adapt based on our experiences. So while we may be predisposed to certain behaviors, we're not bound by them. We have the capacity to learn, grow and change. In essence, our brains are like intricate tapestries woven with threads of biology, experience and environment. They shape our behaviours in complex and fascinating ways and understanding these differences can help us appreciate the unique tapestry of each individual. It's also a powerful reminder that we should not use these differences to stereotype or pigeonhole individuals. Instead, we should celebrate the diversity and complexity of the human brain and the rich variety of behaviours it produces. So the next time you notice a behavioural difference between males and females, remember, it's not just about upbringing or societal norms. There's a good chance the brain is playing a key role. Our brains hold the key to understanding why males and females behave differently. Hormones play a crucial role in shaping our brains and behaviours. As the curtain rises on the world of hormones, we find a bustling backstage of biochemical actors that are instrumental in the drama of human development and function. Two key players in this narrative are testosterone and estrogen, hormones that are often associated with male and female characteristics respectively. Testosterone, the leading man, is not just about brawn and bravado. This hormone has a significant role in the development and function of the male brain. It influences neural circuits, affecting cognitive abilities like spatial skills. Studies have shown that higher levels of testosterone can enhance these abilities, helping to explain why men often outperform women in tasks like mental rotation. Meanwhile, estrogen, the leading lady, is not just about grace and beauty. This hormone is a powerhouse in the female brain, influencing cognitive abilities like verbal fluency. Research has shown that women often outperform men in language-related tasks, and estrogen is believed to be a significant factor in this. But it's not a simple one-to-one -one relationship between these hormones and brain function. It's more of a complex dance, with other hormones like progesterone and oxytocin joining in, and factors like genetic makeup and environmental influences adding layers of complexity. For example, the action of testosterone is not uniform across all men or even within the same individual at different times. Environmental factors can affect how the brain responds to this hormone. Similarly, the influence of estrogen on cognitive abilities can vary among women and change over the course of a woman's menstrual cycle. In the end, it's a symphony of hormonal interactions that shapes the intricacies of our brains and behaviours, adding another layer of complexity to the differences between the male and female brain. It's a fascinating field of study that continues to reveal new insights about the mechanisms of brain development and function. Hormones add another layer of complexity to the male and female brain. So, what does all this mean, you might be wondering? Well, let's take a moment to summarise the key takeaways from our exploration of the male and female brain. We've delved deep into the brain's basics, understanding its intricate structure and function, and how it serves as the command centre of our bodies. We've looked at the physical differences, observing that, on average, male brains tend to be larger, while female brains have more cortical density, However, it's important to remember that size doesn't necessarily equate to capacity or ability. It's much like comparing two computers. One might be physically larger, but the other could have more efficient processing power. In our journey, we've also delved into cognitive differences. We've seen that generally females tend to excel in verbal tasks, while males might have an edge in spatial tasks. But remember, these are just general trends, and individual variation can and does occur. We've also touched upon behavioural differences, noting that females generally display more empathy and are better at reading emotional cues, while males typically exhibit more aggressive behaviours. Yet we've also emphasised that these behaviours are not set in stone and can be influenced by numerous factors, including environment and upbringing. Finally, we've explored the impact of hormones on our brain and behaviour. We've seen how testosterone and estrogen can shape our brains differently and influence our behaviours in unique ways. But what's vital to remember here is the concept of overlap. Yes, differences exist, but there's also a significant amount of overlap and individual variation. Each brain is unique. Each person is unique. Our brains are not just male or female. They're complex, multidimensional and unique to each of us. 
understanding the differences between male and female brains can help us appreciate the richness and diversity of human experience. It's a fascinating field of study that continues to evolve and reveal more about who we are, how we think, and why we behave the way we do. So keep exploring, keep learning, and remember, every brain is a world in itself. Understanding the differences between male and female brains can help us appreciate the richness and diversity of human experience. Before we bring this enlightening journey to a close, we're eager to hear from you. What stood out to you during our exploration of the male and female brain? Are there other intriguing aspects of the brain you'd like to know more about? Perhaps you have a personal anecdote or observation that you're keen to share. This platform thrives on the exchange of ideas, so don't hold back. Leave a comment below and let's keep the dialogue alive. If you found something new and insightful in this video, we'd appreciate it if you could hit the like button. It's just a simple click for you, but it makes a world of difference to us. It helps us reach a wider audience and spread our message about the incredible wonders of the human brain. Also, if you're not a subscriber yet, we encourage you to do so and don't forget to hit the bell icon. We regularly dive into captivating topics like this and wouldn't want you to miss out. Lastly, if you find this video inspiring enough to ignite curiosity in someone you know, feel free to share it with them. Knowledge, after all, becomes more potent when it's shared. So let's carry on this journey of discovery and knowledge together. Until our next rendezvous, stay curious, keep an open mind, and continue your exploration of the world within your brain.